In this tutorial, we'll be building a multi-page recipe app with data storage, authentication, and Figma to UI code generation using Next.js in AWS Amplify Studio. I'll also be chatting through a couple brand new features. So even if you've used Amplify Studio before, this video could help you to learn those. First, you're gonna create an AWS account. If you don't have one, then go to the Amplify console within the AWS console. Then on the Get Started page, click Get Started under Build an App. I'll call mine Recipes and then Deploy. Once your backend instance is created, click Launch Studio. Once in Amplify Studio, click Create Data Model. My first model will be named Recipe. My recipe will have a ID, title, photo, and I'm gonna make that an AWS URL, description, ingredients, and steps. Now I'll save and deploy. The next thing that I'm going to do is head to my content tab and in here, I'm gonna just create a couple recipe instances so that I have some sample data to see within my application. The next thing that I'll do is go to the UI library tab. I'll click get started and then go to use our Figma template. Then click get a copy. Here there are primitive components as well as more complex compound components that you can use within your application. You can customize these. You can also use the AWS Amplify Theme Editor plugin to make any changes that you need within your application. I already have a Figma file set up that I'm going to use. Basically what I did was I customized the review card to no longer have all of the review information. It's a little bit simpler. And then I made it so that the product detail was just one column instead of two. And I renamed highlights to ingredients and details to steps. I'll come back to the other components later. I'll accept all the changes that are incoming. Now I'm gonna go to the recipe component and I'm gonna configure this. I'm gonna make it so that my image source is the recipe's photo. And if it doesn't load automatically, refresh. And there my banana bread shows up. I'm gonna set my title here to the recipe title. This will be the recipe's description. My ingredients. And then my steps. So all my data is bound to my component. I'll go back to UI library now, and I'm going to do the same for my recipe card. I'll bind these to the relevant items, so this will be the recipe description. The one thing that I'm gonna do differently is I'm going to add a link to this. So, so my prop will be as, and then I'm gonna make it into an A tag. I'm gonna have another prop here, and then my href I'm going to set to a slash and concatenate that with the recipe's ID. So basically, if I click on the title here, I'm gonna to go to a second page that shows the detail of just the banana bread. One more thing that I'm gonna do is create a collection. So a collection is the list of components. I'm gonna just call this the recipe collection and I'll just keep this as the default, but you can add different directions, margin, padding, alignment, search, gridding, and pagination here if you have more elements as well. I'm gonna to go to this get component code and I am going to first install the Amplify CLI if I don't have it already. I do have it since I work on the team, but if you don't, go ahead and install the Amplify CLI. I'm gonna go ahead and create a Next.js app and I'll call it Recipe App. If you're new to Next.js, I'll link a few tutorials 
in the description to get you started. I'm not going to go over the Next.js fundamentals, but there are places to find that for sure. I'm going to change into my recipe application and I'm going to install AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify UI React. I'm going to open up my text editor for this application and I'll open up my app.js file. I'm going to copy this block of code. The one thing that I'm going to need to do is change my paths to have source in them. So I'm going to do dot dot slash source. I'm also going to copy this here, wrap my component in the theme provider. And I'm also going to run amplify pull. So if you run the local setup instructions, you're going to get this amplify pull command go ahead and run that in your terminal. What this is going to do is it's going to generate code for you, such as those UI components and also data models. I'm going to go with all the defaults here. Another thing that I'll want to do is make sure that my CSS file is included. So Amplify UI doesn't come with a font by default and we'll want to make sure that it does have one. So I'm going to use the interfont, paste that in there. And you can search for that URL instead of trying to type it with me. Now I'm going to open up my index.js file, and this is going to be my home page. You can see that when I ran the amplify pull command, this whole source directory generated. So I've got that AWS exports file now and a bunch of UI components in here. I'm going to strip out all the code that's in here right now, and I'm going to import my recipe collection and render it on the page. Now I'm going to go to my development server and I see that my list of recipes renders on the page. So just like that, all I really needed to do was import the component and render it. I also had some lines of the configuration here. We'll talk a little bit more about the theme provider in the future, but in this line of code, I'm tying my front end to my back end. And I'm also making sure that my styles are included. The next thing that I'm going to do is create a page that will render one individual recipe. So I'm going to call this id.js. I'm going to import serialized model, data store, amplify, and with SSR context. These are all from the amplify libraries. And what these do is allow you to work with data store but they also allow you to do that on the server side. And these two helper functions help out with that. I'm going to import my recipe UI component as well as my recipe data model. I'm going to call it recipe model in this case. I'll write a get static paths function. In Next.js, the get static paths function generates paths based off of a data set. So in this case, I'm going to query for all of my recipes. I'm going to do that on the server side though. And so I'm going to use the data store library, but with server side rendering context. So what I'm going to do is iterate through all of my recipes and create a page for each one. Then I'm going to write a get static props function. And this will run when I try to hit a page that matches this format. So slash the ID of a recipe. So again, I'm going to do this on the server side and I'm going to query for a recipe whose ID matches the one in the URL. Then I'm also going to convert this to a format that can be passed to my React component. Finally, I am going to create a recipe detail function that takes my recipe from above and renders that recipe component on the page. I need to pass it the individual recipe that I want to render. So I'm going to give it through props that recipe that I want to display on the page. So now if I go to, for example, the banana bread page, it will render the recipe detail for banana bread. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is show you how to add data models that are nested within this. So for example, each recipe could have comments. How do I display a list of comments on this recipe detail page? I'm going to go to my data tab and add another model. This model will be named comment. 
it'll have that ID author, text, and date. And I'm going to add a relationship here. So each recipe is going to have many comments. I like to make my relationships lowercase, so I'm going to rename mine to comments. Then I'll save and deploy. While this is deploying, I'm going to go back to my Figma file. In my recipe component, I'm going to add a blank component slot. So basically, I'm going to add an empty frame within my component. I'll make it the width of the whole component and have a little bit of height on there as well. Whenever I want to sync changes that I made in Figma into Amplify Studio, I'll, I'll click Sync with Figma. And then you can accept or reject changes. Now I'm going to go into that recipe component here and configure. And I'm going to take this comment list here and convert it to a slot. This will allow me to put whatever React component I want within there, whether it be just an H2 or some other studio created component. Now I'll wait for my data model to finish deploying. Now that it's done deploying, I'm going to go back to my content tab and create a couple placeholder comments. Now I'm going to go to the UI library tab and I'm going to configure this comment component. The comment component I also created in Figma, it's wildly simple. It's just a username with a date below it and some comment text. This is where I really spotlight that I'm not a designer. So now I'm going to go and set my username to my comments author. I'm going to set this to the comments date and I'm going to set this to the comments text. I probably should have set this to the AWS date as a note. I just left it as a string, which will also work if I want to display it in a certain format, but you probably want to use the actual date field. I'm going to create a collection of these. So I'll call it comment collection. And again, I'll just keep it as a list of here. Now, since I've made it changes to my Amplify app, I'm going to run Amplify pull. Amplify pull will sync my changes from my studio app down to my local application. Now I'm going to go back to my code and within here, I'm going to query to get my comment. Only the ones that belong to the recipe whose page I'm on though. So I'll make sure that the recipe ID is equal to the recipe ID of the page. I will also make sure to import that model. I will also pass along those comments. And then my component slot is called the comment list. So I'm going to put that comment list here and I'll put the comment collection within that slot. I will make sure to pass the list of comments that I want to display on that page right here as well. So comment collection with the prop comments with just the comments that I want to render. Now I'll make sure that my development server is running. One quick note is that I had said comment instead of comments. So make sure that your comments are plural consistently. And now you can see that my comments are listed on the page. The last feature that I want to show is responsive components. I'm going to go in again to Figma. and I have a nav bar built out. So my nav bar has what's called a Figma variant. So I have two different variants here and I'm going to set the variation with different breakpoints. These breakpoints names are going to correspond to breakpoints within my Amplify theme editor. So this has the base, the small, medium, large, extra large. You can also make it so that these are different. So if you want base to be some other value, or the large to be some other value, you can set that and update that in here. I have a medium and a large variant here. You can create another variant by saying main comp by just doing main component and then add variant. And basically what I'm doing is on smaller screens, I'm going to hide all this detail on this side and also make it so that it's a color. Sometimes you'll see that the full page navigation is like one color and then the smaller one is a different color. So what I need to do in order to get that into my component is sync with Figma, accept any changes, rerun Amplify pull in order to sync 
studio changes down to your local application. And then I'm going to render that nav bar on my home page. Way back when we were setting up our application, I used the theme provider. And that theme provider component took a studio theme. That theme is generated by Amplify and it's within this UI components directory here, but it has a bunch of information about the UI theme. And you can use that UI theme editor in Figma to set all this, or you can write one manually if you want as well. So this will have all the information about my breakpoints. So now back on my home page, you can see that when my page is smaller, my nav bar looks like this. When my page is bigger, my nav bar has the additional detail and is white. I am going to add a prop to this to make it so that the width is always 100% because sometimes it's a little bit narrower than the page. But you'll see that now my nav bar works as expected. And just like that, I can have different components render at different breakpoints. You can also use auto layout within Figma if you don't want any like dramatic changes to your components on different screen sizes, definitely use that auto layout. But if you want to render two different components at two different breakpoints, this is the way to do that. So in this video, we built out a full stack application using AWS Amplify. We also used two brand new features to add responsive components and nested components with component slots within our application. I'd love to see what you build with Amplify Studio. So if you build something, leave a comment below with what you do end up building. And I work on the product team that builds this. So if you have any feedback, please leave it and I'll pass it along to the rest of the team. Like and subscribe to see my next video. Thank you so much.